This video is brought to you by the community. Thank you to all of my channel members for your continued support. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel, the first video of 2024 and today we're going to focus on the Constellation series of ships but in particular we are going to revisit the Taurus. The Taurus I have fond memories of, it was my first large-ish ship, um, I believe I upgraded to the Taurus from my Cutlass Black, so I would say as a new player this was my first large ship. Um, in terms of Star Citizen this is not a large ship but as a new player this was a large ship to me and I have very fond memories of this ship it is a stone cold classic um, very popular in constellation series of ship throughout the verse and the Taurus for me I decided to melt my mark to Zeus MR I will pick that back up on buyback and I decided to pick up the Taurus again so why did I decide to pick up the mighty Taurus again well I got to thinking with my brain box about the things I might need for the fleet, my fleet in particular, which has changed somewhat and will continue to do so. I have no doubt um, that my fleet will develop, evolve and shape into something else within a year or so when new cool stuff um, gets released. Until then though, I do need a ship that is going to be a workhorse. Now the Taurus fits that bill very well, it's extremely utilitarian, it has some attributes which make it very very useful. The idea behind this ship for me is I'm going to use it as a workhorse and probably transfer transfer cargo, sorry transfer is not a word, transfer cargo to and from the various ships in my fleet. And I couldn't think of a better ship to do so, the ship itself enables you to have four man crew it has a tractor beam turret, it has a defensive turret, it has enough room for vehicles. It's just an all-round great ship. Not to mention that the firepower is um, just ridiculous for a, for a ship this size. Let's be honest, 24 size 2 missiles, 4 size 4 weapon systems that can be fired on a gimbal site. This thing packs a punch, it has a size 3 shield generator, so there is a lot of protection and indeed firepower that the Constellation series of ships put out anyway, but the Taurus um, having that is obviously a plus. Now, I like the idea of being able to accommodate people. I like the, the, the classic bridge design. I think as bridge designs go, I think the Constellations is um, very, very good. Yes, the struts around the cockpit can be quite intrusive. However, I feel like the Constellation Taurus, in fact, all the Constellations have some of the best MFD displays in the game everything and I mean everything can be displayed at once which of course in its own right is a huge advantage now originally I did think that maybe I could use the Corsair as said workhorse but that is more of a war horse and there is a distinct comparison between the two also I kind of felt like constantly folding and unfolding the wings of the Corsair would probably cause more aggro than I was willing to deal with and I thought well the Taurus is just as effective in terms of firepower defense and that stuff plus we have the extra SCU in the back of the ship where the snub fighter is normally placed so the Taurus kind of swung it for me on those principles but also because it's a classic and it looks although kind of dated in its own way the ship is retro right and I like the look of the Connies um, it's only the front of the cockpit that really kind of lets it down a little bit, but it's not enough to make me turn my nose up at it. It's um, a fantastic ship. It looks sci-fi. I think everyone agrees that the constellations look great. I prefer the Taurus over the Phoenix. 
Yes, I know comment sections are going to go mental. I don't like the Phoenix as much as I enjoy the Taurus. I think the Taurus is something um, that really is going to come into its own, especially now that it's had that excellent tractor beam turret added in the lowest section beneath the cockpit. I think uh, having a ship where I can transfer supplies, weapons, um, the personal SEU boxes or anything like that and transfer it to a bigger ship knowing that I've got an excellent shield generator, excellent components, excellent firepower and the ability to defend myself and also the ability to carry friends and or crew, NPCs, whatever it might be, this ship really will come into its own. I think it's going to be the backbone, if I'm honest, of logistical supplies for my fleet and to that end probably many other fleets throughout the verse. Um, Having a Taurus is almost certainly a benefit to anyone, I believe. Um, do I miss the snub fighter like the other constellations have? No, I do not. I hardly ever use snub fighters. There's never a good enough reason for me to want to use a snub fighter unless it was some sort of light recon um, in that sort of scenario. Then maybe the snub fighter would come in useful. But this is not what I intend to use the Taurus for. The Taurus will be a logistical supply vessel. That is how I intend to use the Taurus. And I do really think that it will come into its own. It looks great. Um, that classic retro sci-fi look that the constellations kind of um, make them popular. As you can see here, I parked it for this lovely shot. I find this quite amusing. So this guy, I don't know why, he's looking around, look, and he thinks, oh, well, this guy's just parked his ship. I'm going to steal his ship which was, you know, star sitters and things, <laughs> the cheeky little shit. So I anyway, just take off. Um, I'm sorry, I had to show this clip. I just found that hysterical. And then he runs away like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing nothing. Um, anyway, back to the video. Yeah, so the, the Constellation Taurus for me is going to make life easier. At least that's my theory behind the Taurus. Okay, so we have the firepower. We've mentioned it. We have the room internally for a vehicle, 176 SCU. Then we move on to these monstrous weapons, um, the size fours, which are gimbaled. And by the way, the capacitors for these are quite ridiculous. You can hold your finger down on the trigger for a very, very long time with the constellations. And uh, that is a lot of DPS put down range. I have never felt the need to swap out these weapon systems at all. They are so proficient at destroying anything that's dumb enough to take a head-on fight with you. So, for me, I won't be swapping out these weapons. I like them just the way they are. There are a few components I would switch out, maybe. Um, the QT drive, almost certainly. Um, it's, I believe it's the Bolon, which at the moment is, is terrible in and around the verse. But uh, we'll discuss that later on during the video. Then we have the missiles, as you can see here, fired from these missile launchers, which are pretty cool. They have their own personal, personal. They have their own independent animation. Um, so we can put a lot of missiles down range and then back that up with a ridiculous lengthy fire rate, as you can see here on the screen now. Um, it just goes on and on and on. And then when you think you're done, no, because we're going on and on and on. And if you haven't killed something by this time, <laughs> unless you're fighting like an Idris or a Hammerhead or something, then there's something wrong. It also has VTOLs, which are, these are classic, I love these. They're so simple, it, so simple but elegant. And depending on what planet you're on, obviously having VTOL um, is extremely useful. Um, and I imagine having the VTOL transferring cargo from ship to ship is also going to be useful. The engines themselves have that classic blue um, flame out, which I like. Um, four engine nacelles, each with many, many thrusters in and around them. Um, but the I like the engines of the Connie. I like that sort of blue, blue gas flame that we get from the back of the constellations. It's really cool. Now, of course, we do have a very useful cargo ramp, which just about squeezes an Ursa rover on. It is extremely tight. Um, getting in and out of the Ursa rover can be a bit of a challenge. Um, it almost killed me, but I like to think of that as exciting. So it does fit in there. We can get vehicles in there, and we can easily get two Grey Cat rocks in there as well. That's how I initially started to use this ship when I first started playing this game. It was my rock miner, and I loved it, apart from all the horrific 30Ks. Underneath the cockpit, then, we have the tractor turret, which is brilliant. How is that not cool? It is almost certainly going to make life very, very easy 
especially if we have the cargo ramp down and we need to load up supplies things like our persistent hangers and things of that nature cargo is going to have to be moved around transported into various ships planning will be needed and i cannot wait to get into that side of the game so this ship with the tractor beam is definitely extremely helpful being able to move cargo from one ship to another for example um, extremely extremely useful um, it just has too many pluses this ship i think it is probably my favorite constellation we also do have the top turret so we do get some extra protection um, now I did note that the gun depression at the front is obviously very very good but round the back it might be quite difficult to hit targets as we have to avoid our own engines and the cells um, we will cover that when we do the walk around and hop in so the Taurus is a superb ship there's no doubt in my mind that this ship is actually going to get better over time like a fine wine I think the uses for it are going to be worth its weight in gold um, and I just couldn't see myself doing these sorts of workhorse activities in say like the Corsair it just wasn't going to work this ship is purposely built to be useful and I have no doubt that those uses will get greater as the game develops and we get more mechanics and new interesting items to move around and things of that nature um, we could easily use this as a mule transport as well transporting drake mules so we could have a fully logistical space truck here um, which is going to be amazing to see right uh, the whole prospect that this ship can cover is um, only going to get better in my eyes so let's take a look internally then and what we have at the back of the ship this is where the snub fight we would sit you store cargo here now um, so the snub fight has been removed you could also post guards on the door if you were you know a naughty citizen who was dealing in narcotics um, you could have guards posted on that door to stop people getting in or whatever so there's a lot of uses not always legal the ship has then we move to the main area of the ship which is the cargo um, part of the ship now there are some um, issues internally well not issues as such but things that need to be worked on to get this ship up to speed with the rest of the ships that we have in game and that is mainly with the components as you can see plenty of room for vehicles here and all of your cargo the cargo ramp is easy to use and get cargo on and off the tractor beam easily slingshot stuff onto that ramp it's just a little bit snug for an Ursa rover but it's doable it's not comfortable but it's doable moving on from that area of the ship then we come to the crew quarters so we have four beds here these also double up as escape pods as you can see there's like a gap underneath the lower beds where you will be able to jettison your crew to safety or yourself if that is what um, needs to happen to protect your life then you will be able to um, jettison those beds and be deposited somewhere random so that would be exciting for sure we also have the airlock which is the elevator underneath the cockpit some storage lockers a seat and a table that will work in the future but still does not at this current moment in time so although simplistic it's uh, charming in its own unique way now the bridge is fantastic I've always been a fan of the constellation bridges um, very roomy they feel uh, special somehow although there's not a lot in here and there isn't any sort of Panaz, I would say it still feels awesome in here I think it's a, a trickery of light but the, the cockpit and the bridge area with the constellations is amazing like I said the only problem I feel and it isn't too much of a problem is as you can see this shot there is a lot of intrusion in your vision with the way that the bridge and canopy is covered by various struts right let's now take a look at the weapons and components you will find on a stock constellation Taurus okay here we are so let's take a look at the stock components so we have two coolers okay which are the cool cores and these are size 2 grade 3 industrial coolers the power plant is a diligence which is a size 2 grade 3 again an industrial power plant I've not had the need to change that power plant at all it is more than efficient at running the ship stock um, so no complaints from me there with the power plants the bolon that everyone hates I 
Don't hate this drive, it's just incredibly slow, and as the universe expands and journeys take longer, then I'm definitely going to want a QT drive with excellent, excellent fuel economy and range, because I do not want to risk stopping all the time. So, that Bolon, I feel like, will come into its own at some point. Finally, we have one size 3 shield generator, and this is the Stronghold, which is a size 3 grade C, and it's a class industrial um, shield generator i would probably swap this out at some point however for my uses at the moment i'm not really concerned about it all too much the missiles we have the strike two um missiles these are size two grade one um these are cross-section missiles and as you can see we just have all the missiles in the world ever and then finally we get down to our rhinos which are size 4, grade 1, and they are gimbaled um, as stock, which is pretty useful to have the gimbals because the ship isn't particularly manoeuvrable. Um, so I'm quite happy with the Rhinos. It's a good weapon system. It will be staying on the ship as is. If I'm going to change anything, it's going to be a QT drive, which I will swap for a crossfield more than likely. Okay, those are the stock components. So let's uh, begin our walk around on this magnificent ship. Now, some points to note. The constellations can be quite tricky to land due to the landing gear um, layout, let's say. Um, you'll note there is nothing under the nose of the ship itself. So, I have to admit, a few times I have come in a little bit too hard. And what will happen is the ship itself will pivot and you might accidentally smash the bottom of your cockpit. If you're not careful, which I am not. Um, so, that's something to be aware of. But apart from that... It's fairly easy to fly, quite sluggish depending on where you are in the verse. It's not by any means nimble, but it is sturdy. Sturdy is the word I would choose to describe this ship. As you can see, we have the underfloor elevator, sorry, the airlock that takes us di up directly behind the bridge. We have these awesome, wonderful VTOLs. I love them. I think they're so, so simple, so retro, so freaking cool. Then we have this massive glass cockpit that overextends itself into a point an arrow shape again i'm not too worried about the struts yes they can be a little bit annoying because the pip rests right on the cross beams of those two struts there it's not something that's game breaking or you know going to cause you massive issue it's just a hindrance you know that's the way i would describe the struts it's not be all or end all it's just a hindrance then we make our way towards the rear of the ship. You can see we have more VTOLs. Cargo ramp is down with the Ursa Rover in it. And then we have two airlocks. Flush, they're symmetrical. There's another one on the other side. And there is actually a third airlock on the very top of the ship. Um, so there's three escape routes and or cargo transfer routes or personnel transfer routes. Whichever you wish to use the airlocks for. They're pretty useful. I think uh, having the airlocks is, is certainly useful. Then we have these giant engine nacelles towards the back, which um, they really do give the constellations that unique look. It's just a fantastic ship, and I'm, you know, I'm going to say it. I've blatantly just got a crash back on this ship again, and uh, when the nostalgia hit me after trying to rock mine in my Taurus, it was a very slow, methodical, frustrating process because that, uh, you know, 30k's were rampant when when this ship was out. Um, yeah. It was good times though, it's such a great ship. Is It's certainly going to prove it's worth its weight in gold, um, if I can use words correctly. I think I am going to get an extraordinarily amount of um, use out of this ship when we get the green light to go do logistical things and things start getting put into the game. It's uh, going to be extremely useful. So we'll hop in the ramp at the back here. We'll close the cargo. We'll go up with the Ursa and hopefully don't get crushed into tiny little bits of spaceman pin human being flesh everywhere no nope, we survived okay so first thing we'll do is we'll head towards the rear of the ship up the ladder and make our way into where the snub fighter is normally stationed on some of the other um, constellations so we'll open up these back doors so perfect little smugglers den basically um, life support nothing interesting in here really there's uh the components for the ship 
are not accessible yet and I think that carries over to the rest of the constellations so although it says life support and um, as we go through this door I think it's the gravity generator no yeah and the power plant you can see there's they don't actually work yet so I believe that the constellations are going to have to have a little um, gold standard pass or another re-standard pass to get the components in they are labeled but they're not actually active not that I could find this and here's another gravity generator um, that doesn't have any buttons or anything to swap and use those components so when resource management comes into the game I'm imagining these will all be put in it's not like there's no space in this ship right it's wonderful in here my only complaint with this little bit of the ship this area of the ship is lighting's a little bit too dim for my liking um, and as you can see there are all the missiles in the world ever we have these airlocks which do prove extremely useful to hop in and out of these i'm more than happy to use these they do come useful look how beautiful this game is it's awesome i mean look at it right let's close that love it yeah so my it's very spacious in here there's all the missiles in the world ever like I said, my only minus, a minor complaint really, is just I feel it's a little bit too dim. If it was much like bright white light, I think would be more useful to me. It's, it just feels a little bit dark and dingy for, for a workhorse that I want the ship to be. I don't want to be tripping up and stumbling on boxes and dropping tractor beams and then not being able to find them. So that's my only complaint in here really, is I, I wish it was a little bit brighter. Um, not immersion breaking, but brighter. You know, I, I like the mood that the lighting in here sets, but for me, a bit brighter, please, CIG, and then, you know, I'm happy. Um, so, nothing really much to talk about in here. You'll fit all your cargo cargo where the, S, um, where the SCU is. You will fit all your SCU where the Ursa Rover is. Thank you very much. Um, so, let's make our way to the neck of the ship itself. Now, we enter the crew quarters. Four bunks for four crew. Perfect. And these do double up as escape pods. Now, I believe the idea is these will jettison right down underneath the ship. So if you do need to run away bravely, which I do a lot, then we've got that option. The classic table still not working. The day will come when that table works and then life will be good. <laughs> we have gun racks here. Um, now, these are storage lockers, I think. I'm, I, I think these might possibly get ripped out and replaced with a much bigger area. Or something more functional. I, I don't feel like they're useful for anything really. Do have a seating area. There's no kitchen kitchen appliances or anything though. Um, I believe CIG said that uh, kitchen appliances and stuff would be be able to be bought in game and placed on ships. Um, let me know in the comments about that. I'm sure I read that somewhere. So if you could just help me clarify that, it'd be brilliant. There's a shower, no toilet. So there's no luxuries in here really. It's as I said. It is the workhorse shield generator again no access to that component yet so i think and expect um quite a lot of internal changes for the constellation maybe um which will be interesting because there is obviously plenty of space in here to do such a thing right let's get into the lower tractor turret then if it wishes to come and play there we go so we'll hop in this like so okay and i already had it switched on um yeah this is where all the magic is going to happen it's going to save you so much time um so you can just slingshot any cargo that you have any supplies any weapons any corpses any vehicles um you can just pick these up slingshot them straight into that cargo area get out the turret sit in the seat close exterior and you're off and then do exactly the same at the other end so extremely useful that turret um we'll hop out oh it didn't kill me good i always get flashbacks of when i uh, first flew this ship and that bottom turret used to kill me all the time it would jettison you into space it's always it's a scary experience man i'm so glad it's fixed all right up to the top turret then um so we'll talk about this for a a little second so these are badges i believe on this yes they are um so towards the front obviously the fire rate is brilliant turrets got buffed they put out a lot more um dps than they used to the rotation is brilliant but as you can see as we move towards the rear of the ship we do not get 
the best coverage. So if there's a clever fighter pilot out there that's going to tail sit you, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. You have to do spicy maneuvers and hope your gunner can get him. But towards the front of the vessel itself, the gun depression is absolutely superb. That would be enough to protect you against maybe infantry if you park the ship um, facing danger, I guess, in case some enemy troops or some pirates or something comes at you, you do have the ability to at least shoot them with the turret. So that is very nice. And the MFDs in here are really cool. Really nicely lit as well. Okay. So now we're out of this one. Please don't kill me. Uh, I'm alive. I'm alive. Awesome. Okay. Now we'll go to the front of the ship. Now this lighting in here for me, and I love the steel grates, and that really does add that effect to the spaceship, doesn't it? It looks superb in here. The lighting's just right in here because we have the light from the outside coming into the ship. Um, Co-pilot seat and another co-pilot seat. One would navigate, I imagine. The other one could operate the missiles, but we're interested in the uh, the boss's seat here. So we'll sit in the captain's seat, pilot seat. Nice smooth animation. And then we're greeted by all the MFDs ever invented, ever. And it's brilliant. The spatial awareness from the MFDs, the fact that everything is readable and you don't have to change anything or much, let's say much, and it's all easily readable from this seat is brilliant. Fantastic design MFD wise. The problem is, as I said before, struts can be a little bit intrusive. As you're flying level, the pip will sit in the middle of those cross beams. Now we do have our um, usual um, buttons that open and close and all of that good stuff. Some of them work, some of them don't. Um, more to be implemented, I believe, in the future. But otherwise, as you can see, the pip just nestles underneath the cross beams there, which it's not a deal breaker. It's just annoying. That's all it is. And then we have our basic buttons there. Um, so minor complaints, but overall a very fantastic ship. I'm definitely going to get some use out of this ship. So guys, let me know what you think about the Taurus because I think it's awesome. Thank you very much for watching. That was my video on the Constellation Taurus. If you enjoyed today's video, you know what buttons to press. And I, of course, will have more Star Citizen content en route to you very soon. Thanks, guys. Take care. Cheers.